controversial. <laughs> It's my little golden-haired darling. You've got to save her, Mr. MacArthur. You've got to save her. It's a pleasure being associated with you on this enterprise, Mr. MacArthur. Oh, oh, I think I got it. I tell you, Charlie, it's one of the biggest stories we ever had handed us. And by big, I mean human. It'll hit the national heart from coast to coast. And we've got it, exclusive. I'm Charlie MacArthur. I'm the spearhead of a great humanitarian crusade. The Golden Age of Television presents Tony Randall in Hello, Charlie, with John Daner, after these messages. Superman considered the center of the world, comes one of the town's fine patriots, my friend, Charlie MacArthur, a smiling young man with good muscles, and a hound dog knows for life. The same Charlie who in a few years would set New York on its ear as a playwright and wind up with the young star of the theater, Helen Hayes, on his arm as a bride till death do them part. But here and now he is a reporter for the Chicago Examiner, beloved by all the denizens of Quincy No. 9, including moochers, loan sharks, and bar flies with good diction. And among them, though a little daft and slightly shabby, were the finest people on earth who covered the court trials and scandals and swindles and Friday morning hangings for the noble press. I drink to your enduring health, sir. How's the outside world? It's approaching 90. What do you put in there, Charlie? It's my own secret formula. Prevents ulcers. Walter Howie was trying to get you. Was he? Did he say it was important? Yes, very. Good. But maybe some stories broke. Hmm. I wouldn't care if the mayor jumped out the window. It's too hot to cover anything. How is that kangaroo boss of yours, Johnny? Mr. Howie? <laughs> I've just spent two days chasing one of his minor brainstorms. He insisted that canoe drowning off Lake Forest was the society debutante. Suicide due to a broken heart. He wouldn't take no for an answer until we fished out a body at 3 a.m. today. Miss Mildred Plotka, a poor old Polish scrub lady who was trying to learn how to paddle. Mr. Howie wants to talk to Mr. MacArthur. You tell Mr. Howie that I'm with my yogi teacher and cannot be disturbed. He's called four times. Yes, it's a revolting habit. Uh, one must humor children and maniacs. MacArthur! MacArthur! I know you're there! I gotta talk to you! It's a matter of life and death! Charlie! And there was a man you couldn't believe existed, Walter Howie, the most tumultuous managing editor ever to wear a bow tie, spry as a mongoose and full of dreams which would have paled the cheek of Genghis Khan. This is one of the biggest stories we ever had handed us, Charlie. Now, by big, I mean it's human. It'll hit the national heart from coast to coast, and we've got it exclusive. Put away your banjo, Walter, and let me hear the worst. You gotta move fast, Charlie. Lightning fast. Getting up steam already? Here it is. A little girl with golden curls, age nine, disappeared from her home near Moline. Now, no. guess where she is. You usually hide them in the boiler room. This little girl, oh, by the way, her name is Letitia McKillop. That's an ominous sounding name, isn't it? Letitia McKillop. Letitia McKillop. Well, little Letitia is locked away in the railroad safe at the Moline Depot. That's a big safe, seven feet high. The station master closed it without noticing that the little child had stepped inside. I've been talking with him on the phone. Oh, he was, he was in bed with hysterics. Was he sober? Sober and heartbroken. Charlie, there's enough air in that safe to allow the little tot to stay alive until midnight. You don't mean to tell me. Now, you're not thinking, Charlie. I beg to differ. Listen, Brainy Bowers. If that station master is sober, as you contend, why doesn't he open that lousy safe and release the little prisoner? Because it hasn't been used in 15 years, Charlie. It's an old safe that stood open until tonight. But now that it's locked, there's nobody alive knows the combination. Dynamite, huh? That's out of the question. We'll blow the little one to smithereens. Our object is to get her out of that safe alive. Gee, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, Beautiful story, Charlie. If you don't muff it, 
Like any of that debutante drowning. You fizzhead! I spent two nights on that greasy old tub trolling for that poor old scrub lady. Oh, well, uh, you, you just picked up the wrong corpse. But forget about that. This is bigger. The examiner saves a human life. You know how? Only too well. You want me to go to Joliet Penitentiary and secure the services of a safe-cracking convict to open that foul station casket. No, 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 no. You'll need at least three or four of them. And no shilly-shallying. Charlie, there's enough air in that safe to keep one human being of that size alive until midnight and not one minute longer. I checked with the Pacifist Hospital staff. Twelve o'clock, Charlie. That's the deadline for the little girl. And also our home edition. You're the best I've got, Charlie. I want that little golden-haired yes. girl all over the yes. front page. Alive. Yes. You may rely on me to my last expense account dollars, Sadi. Hello? MacArthur? What would he be doing in my office? In the days before editors were all great global thinkers, they used to be able to melt steel bars and stone walls in this fashion. MacArthur of the Examiner. I've been expecting you. You read it to call. Jacoby is the name, spelled with an I. Anthony Jacoby. Gotcha. You read it to gave me the general picture, and I brought these men down for you to examine. I appreciate your cooperation, Warden. That's J-A-C-O-B-I. Gotcha. Anthony. Gotcha. I've given the boys a preliminary talk, and I'm proud to say they're all volunteers. Pick as many as you want. All safe crackers? Guaranteed. Fellas? I'd like to take you all, but we only need two on this job, so I hope you don't mind a few pertinent questions. Go right ahead, Mr. McArthur. We're here to give service. Thanks, boys. We need the two best safe crackers in the business. And no lies, please. A little girl's life is at stake. Well, I've done the Aurora Bankers Trust job. That was a big score. Forty-two grand. Yeah, that was a peak job with dynamite. No dynamite, honest. We use nitroglycerine. I'm sorry, explosions are out. You heard about that Elgin job, ain't you? Well, we open it in 10 minutes flat. Yeah, with a blowtorch. Yeah, they got caught by a teacher with an umbrella. No, I tripped. It was raining. Anybody can trip. Fellas, what we need are bona fide safe crackers. Like Jimmy Valentine, able to solve the combination of a safe by ear alone, using only their fingers, so as not to endanger the little girl's life. Mr. MacArthur. You're wasting a lot of valuable time listening to me, fellow convicts, bragging about talents which they ain't got. I can shorten this inquiry for you. Please go ahead. Always oh, take a charge. Who do you think you are, President Harding? My name is Irish Eddie, and I'm the only man here properly gifted for the work required. I call your attention to the Carlinville First National Bank job, done with me fingers only. Uh, Warden Jacoby will bear me out. How about that Galesburg Bank, Eddie? That was a finger job. Were you involved in that? Now, Warden, you want the little girl out alive, don't you? You're wasting a lot of good time asking questions that I'm not inclined to answer. What about me? Nobody asked me nothing. I can give this big mouth Irishman a week's head start on any safe in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Mo's a good man. i just been looking over his record. Five finger jobs and wanted to New York State for three more. Thanks, Warden. Excuse me. Hello, Warden Jacoby speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Howie. Uh, yes, he's here. I'll put him right on. It's your editor again. Hello, Walter. I'm all set. I've got two beauties, Big Mo and Irish Eddie. They can open any safe in the kingdom just by breathing on it. Now, please pay attention, Charlie. We don't want any fumbles. Mr. McArthur, take me to Moline with you. Yeah, let me go to Moline with you. My poor old mother's there. I'd love to see her. Yeah, I got a son in military school there. What's going on down there, Charlie? Stop stalling. What do you mean, stalling? I just entered this fish trap five minutes ago. You gotta pay attention, Charlie. This thing is too big. The human life is at stake. I know that, you stuttering banshee. I'm breaking my neck. Please, Charlie, we haven't got time for personalities. Now, there are two more things. A, tell Wharton Jacoby that this is an examiner's story and that we're relying on him for secrecy. Oh, he knows what'll happen to him and that rubber jail. I'd like to... B! 
As soon as you get to Molina, I want you to start phoning your story in. I'll have two stenos at this end. Now, Charlie, I want interviews with every humanitarian who was rushed to Moline by the examiner. I want a pen picture of every heartbreaking human detail. Now, stand back, folks, stand back. Nobody else can come inside. Take it easy, folks, take it easy. We got expert help coming from Joliet, men who know how to open the safe. Keep them off the railroad tracks. We don't want any further tragedies today. All right, folks, let me through here. Let me through. The least you can do, Sheriff Petrus, is to let rest that man. He locked her in there. Why, well, he's no better than a common murderer. You're a murderer! Yes? This is the station master. Oh, hello, Mr. Howie. No, no, he ain't arrived yet. Yep. Everybody else is here. Crowds growing all the time. See, Mr. Howie. Something's got to be done. I'm the one that's guilty, you know, and... Huh? Oh, nobody's talking about lynching, but... I, I don't... I feel bad anyway. Say, say, there's a train coming in. You hold on, Mr. Howie. I think maybe that's the expert. You hang on now. Sheriff, I think that's the train. Stand aside, folks. I understand aside. This is a special train from Joliet. We're bringing the safe open, expert. Us, madam. Hold your fire, Sheriff. These men are wards of the Chicago Examiner. They are the finest safe crackers in the country. Well, this way, gentlemen. In the name of humanity, folks. I'm uh, Warden Jacoby of Joliet. I guarantee these boys will do the job. That's J.A. Hey, that ain't necessary. Oh, take all that away. That'd just interfere with our concentration. Move it out. Doctor, would you and the nurse mind standing back, giving these gentlemen all the room they need to operate? Oh, can you open the safe? My poor baby. Oh, that's a crummy safe, lady. We could open that easy. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'll pray for you. Hold it. Hold that. Mr. Howley's holding the wire for you, Mr. MacArthur. Go to work, boys. Mr. Howley told me to get this sandpaper for you. In case you need it for your fingers. That's for amateurs, mister. I work by ear. Yeah, me too. What we need is quiet. The golden age of television will continue in a moment. Oh, I'm uh, Jerry Forsythe, the mayor of Moline. That's F-O-R-S-Y-T-H-E. If there's anything you need, just ask for it. What we need, mayor, is silence. That's uh, the city ambulance I ordered it to stand by. I can't do anything with the safe if everybody's going to keep hollering. Mayor, we've got to have absolute silence. Oh, I'll take care of it. All right, now, it's going to be absolutely quiet. Now, now uh, I want the grandmother and, and the warden kneeling in prayer uh, beside these two comments. Come on. Nay, nay, nay. No, cut it out. You can see you're disturbing them. Grab it later. All right. Oh, okay, folks. We'll get it later. Anybody on here? Well, hello, Walter. What's new? Charlie, are the two boys working? Have they got their striped suits on? Yes, they're working and in full uniform. And as soon as you finish chirping, I'll start writing. Well, keep filing till the safe is open. Give me a flash over the phone. I'll hang on. Okay, Sahib. I'll collect my thoughts. Fellas, will my typing disturb you? No, that's all right, but no talk, please. Stick your ear on it, Big Mo. Hear it? Yeah. Sounds like a safe I was once affiliated with in Albany. It's a three-member job. Yeah. These guys would make the safes this easy. They're just asking for it. Holy, I, I thought it was the cops. If it's too much for you, Big Mo, will you go off somewhere and sit down quietly and let me finish the job? Not do it. You're not getting your pictures or papers without me. Hmm. Fellow citizens, I know how everybody feels about this situation. And that every one of us has got the same prayer in his heart for that terrified little girl in the safe. And for her heartbroken grandmother. And I want to thank you personally for keeping quiet so as to allow those two men to give their full talents to their job. Folks, tonight, 
Those two men in striped suits ain't convicts. They're heroes! <laughs> and when they've saved little Letitia McKillop, we're going to parade them through the streets of our city. Folks, folks, they've got the first number of the combination, number two. <laughs> no cheer, no cheer, not these. Our job is silence and hope for little Letitia McKilka. Excuse me, are you the reporter? Yes. I'm Letitia's grandma, Agnes McKillop. It's my fault she went in there, because I wouldn't let her go swimming in the creek. Why, it's full of snakes, that creek is. Do you think Letitia wanted to commit suicide, Mrs. McKillop? Yes, I do. She's always been very advanced for her years. Number seven. We got the second number. Number seven. One more to go. Please, hurry, hurry. Madam, I'm going full of speed. You can't do this kind of work with a brass band breathing down your neck. Yeah, it's knife racket. Sorry, folks. It was the Moline Volunteer Cornet Brass Band. You won't hear another toot on them until I give the signal. You'd be able to watch the safe crackers a little bit better from over there, Mrs. McKillop. Charlie! Charlie, get out of here! Charlie! Charlie, you're there! The Confederates are about to attack our left flank, and we're getting ready to stand off a cavalry charge. Otherwise, there is nothing to report. Number five! We got number five! On your mark, Walter. He's open. Come on, me. He pulled. They're opening the safe door. Don't hang up. Stand back, stand back, everybody. Just the grandmother and uh, uh, the doctor, Murphy, can go. Letitia, speak to me. I don't see nobody. That's right, she ain't in here. She must have escaped. I gave him the signal, Sheriff. There's no child in this safe. But that, that's impossible. I saw her. I saw her slip in while the door swung closed. You didn't see nothing, you booze head. And after taking the pledge last Sunday, I am reporting you right now. This is a real April fool. There's no lousy kid in here. Come on, you lugs. Mean we ain't heroes? Heroes. What's your name? Tisha McKillop. Who are they looking for? Somebody said they were looking for somebody. Oh, just having fun. You been swimming? Yeah. Grandma waltz me every time she finds out I've been swimming. But that's why I have my swimsuit in the old safe. Nobody ever goes there. I was going to sneak home late when Grandma was asleep. But there's Grandma. You're still there, Walter. Did he get it all? Well, let's have it, quick. Is the little town alive? Uh, first things first, Walter. It is my pleasure to inform you that you have pulled the dopiest, daffiest, pusillanimous blunder in the history of journalism. I, I can't quite hear you, Charlie. You'll have to speak a little more clearly. As clearly as I can put it, Sahib, you have made an unprecedented jackass out of me and yourself and the examiner and the state of Illinois in general. You big mastermind! There was no golden-haired little girl in that half-witted safe. The whole thing's a goony fake. Oh, brother, people aren't going to stop laughing at the examiner for the next five years. Nobody's going to laugh at the examiner, Charlie, because we're breaking the hottest story this town has seen in years. It's terrific. What's terrific, you fuzzhead? The story, it's terrific. It's one of the biggest scoops we ever pulled off. What is the nature of our scoop, Mr. Howie? Those wonderful people. Everything they said and did. How everyone from the highest to the lowest rode to the rescue of that little girl. There was no little girl to rescue! It's 
not a story about a little girl, Charlie. This is a story of humanity, the goodness in people's hearts, the doctors, the nurses, the safe blowers, the warden, the man with the flu, the village band. Now you get me interviews, get me pictures. I got you, Walter. I'll line them all up, yeah. I'll have the story on the wire in 15 minutes. Hold it, folks, hold it. We want pictures now. The examiner is going to tell this story from the humanitarian angle. How you wonderful people rode to the rescue with enough goodness in your hearts to rescue a thousand little girls. That's our story. <laughs> Line them up outside for a parade. Mayor, we're putting a big, fat, seven-column headline on this story. It's a wonderful world, and it happened right here in Moline. Take <laughs> folks, we'll march on the city hall. We'll show them that it's a wonderful world and it happened right here in Moline. Out of the way, little girl. Come on, folks. Check into Amanda's for a hilarious half hour of comedy with Emmy winner B. Arthur. Next. <laughs>